Good evening and welcome to Jack Dotson's Racing Insider News with Scott Allen and the big teddy bear on the end, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Staples. Joe's teddy bear Staples. I did that for I did that for somebody else who <laughs> I won't I won't call her name out on there, but there's the teddy bear. <laughs> Just for you, the teddy bear. Anyway, until Friday. Well. I ain't gonna, we ain't gonna, I, ain't gonna, I ain't going into that. Um, I might have to change the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, let's get way deep. Guys. Get way let's deep. Pump the brakes on that while yeah, we're in. Let's just leave this alone. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> don't call right now. He's not. He's busy. <laughs> um, lot going on this week. This past week with the chase. Um, Give us your rundown on what you thought of the race the Sunday. Man, I thought it was exciting. Yeah. It was fun to watch. I, I, I really thought Junior was going to get in, and I thought that was going to be great because I think the, if he would have got in, I think we got some good tracks to come up for him. He runs good at Martinsville. He runs decent at, at Homestead. So I thought it was going to be a good good chance. And, 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 and he had the car to beat. Um, but I will say I got to tip my hat to Joey Logano because I think it surprised me until I heard him interview him after the race that – when he took the outside to get in front of Gordon to split those guys up on the restart, he said that he knew Jeff had the best car out there and Junior had the next best car. And that he thought he would rather have Jeff pushing him. That he knew if those two got together, there was no way he was going to mm -hmm. separate them or, or stay in front of them. And, and it worked in his favor. And it that did. was a smart move on him. But if you'd have told me at the beginning of the year that anybody – would have swept one round of the chase and oh, went in yeah. three races, I'd have bet the house that there's no way that would have happened. That's, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable that he's done that. He's And he's done it on different types of tracks. Right. You know, that's unbelievable to me. He's not done it. He's done it on a speedway. He did it on the mile and a half. He did it at, um, what was it, Kansas? Kansas. And what was before? Charlotte, Kansas. Well, Charlotte and Kansas is similar. Similar, but they, they say they're two different types of tracks. Mm -hmm. Uh, the speed's a lot different at Kansas than it is at Charlotte, but right, he's. I mean, he's he's got that team has got it together, which even even bothers me more with the fact where is Roush Fenway? These guys are head above Roush Fenway right now. Logano is better than Keselowski. Yeah, yeah and well, he has been the whole. It's about the, whole a, the whole yeah, season. For the just, most part. I want to say maybe the first <coughs> half they or the first quarter they were sort of the same. But Joe Logano has stepped up. Oh, I mean, there's a huge controversy. We're going to be talking about Kevin Harvick for weeks or at least until this weekend. Right. Now, I personally don't think he wrecked somebody on purpose. But I certainly by no means think he, it hurt his feelings. Oh, I don't think it did either. And I don't, and I agree with you. I don't think he intentionally did it, because if you, look I'm at, sure he was hoping something like that would happen. Yeah. By all means, I, I, yeah. But you look at that first restart; he moved completely out of the way, mm -hmm. so he knew what the situation was. Yes. But the second time, they come down. It looked like Trevor Bain got a good run, and decided I'm gonna go on around him. Yeah. And then I don't know whether Kevin just. I think he was trying to start getting out of the way. I'm sure he had to know the six was there or, or close, but he was hoping for. I heard I was listening to their scanner and I heard um, the crew chief come over the radio and was like, "Look, you can't, you can't get out of the way. No. I mean, you just can't do it. We're talking about the chase here. You don't have that big of a cushion, especially if Junior wins the race. That's going to suck up that last spot. And he yep. he had one spot cushion, um, and and that. You know, he said, you're going to have to stay in line. That's your job. And 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 hope that there's a, a wreck and a caution comes out and we get to stay kind of where we're at. So, and he said, you're going to, you know, I, I think you're even going, he even told me, he said, I think you're even going to have to try to block some guys. And I think anybody that was in that same situation would have well, done, you, that, I mean, you're in a, you're in that, done that same thing. Your whole season is right, is right there on the line, right. really. And, and furthermore, I would have. I mean, if it was a matter of going to the chase and winning the championship, 
Oh, we already know what you would have done. <laughs> I mean, I'd have turned somebody for it. And I don't and if somebody turned me just for that, as long as it's, it you know, nobody gets hurt. Yeah. I would I I would have been I, I mean, what was what's the difference between that? Even if even if he let's say he did, let's just hypothetically say he did do it. What's the difference between that and Ryan Newman stuffing uh Kyle Larson and Kyle Larson Phoenix, in the wall? Larson. There ain't no difference. No. And I don't think Kyle was mad at, at the thirty one no, because he of it because he, he he understood I mean, he wasn't happy about it, right. and I can't but it, say it, it was racing. Um, I, I would understand that, you know, it was it was to me, you know, you had to get but by me, and the, I, I the would. Two understand. situations are, are different, but the thing about it is, it's the same result. I mean, right. the man had to do that to stay in the in the chase. Newman had to, he had to move Larson last year to yeah. stay right. in the chase. So, and, and then what is it? The a couple of guys were hollering about. Um, well, not not drivers, but just people in general are hollering about. Well, he he changed the outcome of the race. All right. Well, Joe Logano changed the outcome of the race when he when he turned the twenty. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago. Yeah. He, so I mean, you can't. I mean, that's not really a, a good explanation. They were, they were complaining about the officiating as well too, as far as the green white checker. You know. Well, I will say that was confusing to me. Yeah, but they never I, did, they never did take the the green flag. It, and I, I understand that. I don't know if I would agree with it, but I do understand right. it. And it makes sense once they said that. But, but how many drivers knew that right at that point that's what was going to happen? Not, I think not. that was a situation where it was like I was thinking, well, that's it. But, yeah. you know, when he first threw it, I, that's it. It's over. Yeah. But, you know, they didn't take the green flag. I would have never – I never thought about it that yeah. way until they explained what the deal was. And, and he was trying to give the green flag never did come out. So, well, well they, did, they displayed it, but nobody took yeah. the green. Yeah. They they had pulled well, withdrew yeah, it and, and put the caution back out before they come yeah. to start finish line. And I think that was an attempt to give Junior a shot at it, which was a fair shot. I mean, it was fair. Mm-hmm. I, and I, I didn't. I did. It was just. It was just confusing because everybody thought, and even all, almost all the drivers. But the two drivers that are complaining about the whole wreck at the end and blaming Kevin Harvick are the ones that are out. Right. And they're just mad. Mm-hmm. And then the only one that really had a shot, Denny, if Kevin would have not made it, Denny might have had a shot at it if Junior wouldn't have won. He, he might have got in. But Denny, they shot themselves. They're, that they're, that they're, is they're all they were their own <laughs> fault. Um, they took too many times to try to fix the car. And didn't fix it correctly. Uh, I believe the second time that was a legitimate try at it, and it didn't work. That one I could see the first time. That was a pure waste, and then they ended up putting them two laps down or a lap down, and then fixing it again, and then a third time. And when they were told they needed to get a plan about fixing it, not come down pit road, that was the crew chief's fault. Yep. Uh, I mean, that, no two ways about it. That was that was the crew chief's fault. So. That I can imagine Denny's Denny's frustration over that because it's you know you know you you win and lose as a team so it's not like one person you can blame it on right. because everybody is, you're a team there's no I in team. Well, what about the David Reagan situation? David Reagan got black flag because one driver said he was losing oil out of the car. So they black flagged him, and he told him, "No, it ain't me." And he kept going. Well, they finally put the "We're going to stop scoring you" flag out. Oh yeah, yeah. And I didn't hear anything else about it. He actually. came to the pit road, and the officials jumped in front of him. He couldn't go nowhere until they checked that car over, and there was no oil leak. Well, ouch! That had been coming from the one car, and it blew up later. I know. And that, it, it, he, I mean, he was on the radio today. I heard him on the radio today. He said, "I get nothing. I, I, I get nothing back." Right. And, he said, and I had nothing wrong with oh, my car. Man. I've only seen them fix a mistake once. And I think that I don't know where they were at is when they said Dale Sr. didn't have a lug nut on. And they black flagged him. He come in and he was running like third. And, and I believe this is the first championship that uh, Jeff Gordon won because that would have made – it was about 30 points difference. And he lost that championship by like 29 points. But he came down pit road. They checked it, and he had to lug that on. And what it was is one one fell off the wheel, which was a yellow or, or bright, and Andy Petrie had one on his on his thing there and just stuck one on it. So when he come down pit road, Andy was like, hey, you know, you just put us a lap down here. So they threw the caution. 
That's the only time I've ever seen anything like that happen. Of course, we're talking about Dale Senior here. Yeah, I mean, right. he, you know, he was who he was, but they they put the caution out and let him make his lap back up and put him the last car on the lead lap, which cost him about 10, 12 spots. And then you know, and, and then he ends up. David Reagan ends up thirtieth. You know, and he was right spot. there in. The, he was right there running with the lead cars most of the day, and then he ends up thirtieth out of this situation. He said, I get nothing back out of this because they said I had a, and I knew I didn't. He said there was no smoke. He said they pulled me on the pit road. There was no oil left. I mean, nothing was on the ground. Where was the oil leak? So he said, I've never heard one driver have the pull to tell NASCAR that we got an oil leak here. We need to stop this car. Well, most of the time we'll, we'll spend laps looking at the car. You know, watch them going around trying to find a leak or something like that when we do hear the complaint. And, you know, and there's quite a few times that we never find it and they keep going. Yeah. But there has been some times yeah. that we have. Well, I heard on you know. Kevin's radio that other people were talking that the that, that he was leaking. Or they thought somebody was leaking. Yeah. So, I don't think NASCAR seen it themselves. I think they were just taking all the information that they were given and saying, hey. And, and congratulations to Timothy Peters for winning the truck race. I see you looking at that, but mm-hmm. um, that was a that was a good win for him and those guys over there. And Dave Talman, who uh, is the Jack fan on the seven on on the seventeen, congratulations to him. Every <laughs> every every squirrel gets a nut now and then. <laughs> but uh, what about Mason Mingus? I mean, he doesn't have a top running car, but you know, Daytona and Talladega sometimes can be a, a little bit of equalizer. Um, it was a good run for that for that team. Chris Fontaine, another guy that you'd hardly ever hear about. Mm-hmm. Both Billy Boat's truck cars were in the top ten mm-hmm. with Chad and Mason Mingus. And uh, Tyler Young had a great run to, in, in his truck this week. And uh, you know, I know we had Ray Black on at the beginning of the season. He's he's impressed me. He he's he's finishing decent mm-hmm. i mean with the equipment he's got he, he's usually in the top 10 or the top 15 that's pretty good for for a rookie yep. in his first season and all that stuff um and at the beginning of the year didn't know if they were going to go all year it was just a few races and it was turning into a full season so he, he's he's done well so that was a that was a pretty decent race i watched most of that one too so that was a pretty decent race there Still hard to believe that uh, what well, Johnny Sauter is going to another team. They're going to another team, and um, the the news came out this week where people may not have been paying attention to it. Brian Patty has a new job. Yeah, next week, next year, he'll be going to the 16 to replace Matt Pusher. And uh, that's I was a surprise because we had heard he was going. Yeah, walk I, away. I, I heard he was. Well, you heard he was going to walk away. I heard he had another opportunity somewhere else, and he didn't take it. Um, I'm really surprised that he's not going with Clint. I, I, that's I think a that's, shocker. That was where I heard he had a shot to go with. And but that well, I'm sure if he wanted it, he could. And uh, he might feel like this is it's time for change. And sometimes you need that. Right. So maybe he can go over there and help him make a decision over there at Ralph Fenway of what, what's going <laughs> well, on. Well, I mean, compared to what they've had, he can bring some insight because they are definitely running better than they are. Yeah. Right. Um, as far as our picks last week, well, we don't need to talk about it. That's, yeah. That's, you know, we don't need to talk about those picks. Well, Jeff had a good run. Yeah, the things feel like. I mean, it keeps feel like they're 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 chugging along there. But I think we're coming up to some tracks, man. I, I really think that if he can have a another good run at Martinsville, I think it will give them some some positive, and it can move forward. I talked to my son Sunday. And he said they are running for their the, the Sunday was the run they had to run for their life and they had to they had to do it and I mean they pulled out all the stops with all the people from Hendrick that they had there all the everything was they they knew that they had to have a shot and the, the thing was that they wanted Earnhardt and Gordon make it to the next round of course Earnhardt didn't but well, they were definitely fast and, I mean ain't no doubt about that when you, when you look at the qualifying results they had five of the top or four of the top five spots. Lee, Lee said we also have Martinsville circled on our calendars three times. He said because we want that race. Mm-hmm. And he said coming away from Martinsville without a win would be disappointing. Right. So, yeah. so anyway. All right. Uh, our first guest tonight will be Cale Conley. Happened to be our uh, pace car driver 
while we were in Charlotte. Took us on the ride <laughs> the of our life. That, yeah, the one that scared you. <laughs> didn't scare it. Didn't scare me. Just. I've they, never gone this fast in a race car. <laughs> All right, teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Conley. How you doing, sir? Good. How are you? All right. This is Jack Dawson with Jack Dawson's Racing Insider News with Scott Allen and Joe Staples. And uh, glad to have you on tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, uh, been, it's rainy here in North Carolina, so I'm just kind of tucked away in my living room talking to you guys. Yeah, well, it's raining here, too, so don't feel bad. It's not, it, you know, we're getting it, too. So, yeah. uh uh, first of all, we want to, you know, we want to talk to you about that little pace car ride you gave us in Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, what you guys think about it? <laughs> Kel, that was the highlight of our day, to be completely honest with you. We laughed so much about that later on, especially when Jack started squealing a little bit <laughs> about the, the, the wall coming. Uh, but, man, we, that was, we, we really had, that was the most fun. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Uh, that's pretty fun to take people around in a pace car. Uh, I did it for the first time in Kansas, and then they asked me to do it again at Charlotte. So I was just uh, I was happy to be able to go out there. and uh, I don't know, Maybe I did it at Charlotte first. But one of them I did it first. And uh, it's fun. You know, it's kind of cool to get to take people out. don't get to experience that mm -hmm. view. I get to see it uh, a lot every weekend. So to me, it's feels normal and I get to real I, it kind of puts it in perspective on how not normal it actually is when I get to see people's reaction right and what's the, what's the craziest thing somebody has done in the pace car so far say it again what's what's the craziest thing that somebody has done in the pace car I mean if you had somebody just screaming or anything funny yeah I had uh, well usually I kind of would explain all the way from leaving pit road and do a lap and a half, two laps, and then come back down. And I'll be talking that whole time, just kind of explaining to somebody. And I took a couple kids out <laughs> at uh, Charlotte, I think it was, and their dad, and they were in the back seat, and the kids were yelling the whole time. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, I'm not even gonna explain anything. I'm just gonna let them enjoy this ride. And, and I'm not kidding. The whole, the whole ride, they were they were yelling and and. Uh, <laughs> When I would get close to the wall, I, I swear they thought we were going to hit it. So it was really funny. Well, now I, I did feel like that a little bit myself there. <laughs> that one time you come out, you come out of four up by that wall when you said it, you got it drift out there. You let it drift out there pretty good. Oh yeah, you feel it up to up to full speed. It, it, it feels like it's coming at you twice as quick. Yeah, it came at me, it came at me pretty quick there. <laughs> after I was, that, I was just laughing. After that, I was fine. After that, I just kind of it kind of caught me off guard with that one. But we told Tim, yeah. we told Tim after it was over with, you did a hell of a job with that. I tell you, because we enjoyed the heck out of it. Yeah, we sure did. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad. To, I'm glad I got to take you guys around. All right. Well, give us a little update on what all's going on with you this year and how your season's been going and. And just, you know, give us a little highlights of the season. Well, honestly, it's been a pretty rough, been a pretty rough season for us. We've had uh, a couple BNF. We haven't really, we're not much, much equipment this year, which has been good for us. But we, uh, we haven't had the finishes that we, we would have liked to have had. We've had some engine failures and parts failures. I think if we could have the, all those back, we'd be a lot better off than point. Um. And we've had a couple races that we haven't run as good at, but when we do run good, it, it, it's really fun and it's nice to be able to go out and battle cars that we're supposed to be racing against each week. Uh, so that that that's been good. I've learned this so much this season on dirty air, and racing in the pack, and uh, restarts, and it's just so much to take in when you're doing it full time every weekend. But uh, even on the off weekends, I've, I've been able to race a dirt car, uh, dirt late model. So I've probably ran that 10 or so times this year. And it's just been a full year of racing for me, and I'm soaking it all in and having a great time. Now, 
just a year or two ago, you got a call and, 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 and ran a couple races at Childress. So this has kind of been a big roller coaster for you. Did you think just a year and a half or two years ago that you, you would be a full-time driver? Yeah, that was, you know, I, I always wanted to. Uh, after running those 10 races up there at, at Childress, uh, I really wanted to be full-time up there with that group. I had got comfortable up there. I knew those race cars were capable of winning, and I just wanted to grow within that organization. And, and uh, if that option wasn't available, uh, and I was very lucky to be able to race full-time in a little bit of a lesser uh, funded team, about a mid-pack team with TriStorm Motorsport, and just not being tough-affiliated was a big difference and the field between cup affiliated teams and non cup affiliated just the resources and everything else is uh, a pretty obvious difference I mean you can watch on TV and you can tell uh, so I, you know I'm, I'm glad the decision were made to take our uh, opportunity and, and run that full season with TriStar because like I said I've, I've learned a ton that uh, I didn't even realize what all there was to, to take in on, on uh, the type of racing I've been doing all year. So how do you and Eddie Pardue get along with, with you know, he's your crew chief, and uh, how, do, how do you get along? Is the communication good between the two of you? Yeah, it is. We, uh, Eddie's, Eddie's a cool guy. He's very calm and cool, collected. He doesn't show a ton of emotion, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that He's got a unique style, and it, take, it took me a while to kind of get used to it, to be able to read him, to kind of understand him, uh, and I, I kind of respect his style because it's so different than what I've ever worked with before. So he uh, listens to everything I got to say, and, and he doesn't take me as a rookie. He treats me uh, kind of like I've been around the sport for, for a while, which is, makes you feel good as a rookie because you you know that there's a lot that what you're saying can probably confuse somebody that's been around the sport for a while but he does a good job of uh, picking through what I say and, and piecing it together and getting, we get it right so it's been, uh, it's been fun to work with him I, I, uh, I've been happy with, with our relationship Looking ahead to 2016, what, is, what does it look like for you in 2016 as far as will you be back with TriStar or what, what's going on there? Well, right now, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm keeping all options open because it, at this point, it's full court press on finding uh, funding just to be able to stay in the sport. Uh, it takes sponsors to, uh, to race and it takes uh, racing to get sponsors and, mm -hmm. and luckily I've had a full season this year where I can get I've got my name out there some mm -hmm. so hopefully we land the right situation and sponsorship wise where we we can uh, approach that having uh, having a funding and you're not sure where to take it that's a good problem to have but uh mm -hmm. We don't have that problem yet, so we're working hard on uh, raising sponsorship, raising the dollars, just to be able to, to go back racing next year. Have you guys moved out to Statesville yet, or are you are you still at the same place? Yeah, we're we're still at sorry, we're we moved out to Statesville, uh, real close to the airport, out there in the old one of the old Everham Motorsports uh, shops. Really, really, really cool, nice new shop. Uh, it's pretty cool when I when I drive out there. I'm impressed every time. It's top notch. That do you work in the shop during the week, any? No, not not work. If I uh, <laughs> if I took my tool box there, I'd be in the way. <laughs> <laughs> They've got their routine and, and they know what they need to do. If if I jumped in and tried to help out, I would actually disrupt the uh, the process more than I would help it. So I've learned to kind of stay out of the way, hang out, talk to the guys, be, be there, be seen at the shop, but uh, 
not interrupt the uh, daily process. <laughs> Now, now, do you are you do you work on finding sponsorship, or is that something the team works on, or you they work on it and you kind of work on it separately? Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they're always trying to raise sponsorship and team. Uh, I mean, I think all teams are always keeping an eye open for opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but it's always I think all drivers work on it too, and I've been fortunate enough to have. Uh, mom and dad and, and siblings that have all kind of taken on the role of, uh, you know, t- keeping it on top of their mind because that's what this sport is it's kind of come to is uh, it just takes the funding to be able to get in a position to where you can go race for a top-notch team. Even even any team, it just takes mm-hmm. funding. So, mm-hmm. um you know, there's there's partners out there to be found. You just have to do your work and find them and uh, take them racing. So, yeah, it's a family effort right now, but uh, but the teams definitely take take part in it too. Now, look, I, I was telling Jack, I've known Eddie for a long time. Uh, we raced all at Langley Speedway, and and Eddie came from Langley Speedway, and his driver Chip Hudson. He could run a 200-lap race, and his hair would still look the same when he took his helmet off. And I said, you know what? Kale's got that same kind of hair. He's all, he's got good hair. Chip had good hair. I think that's just a tradition of, of Eddie there. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. A, lot of people, a lot of people say that. I've heard that before, and it's like, you know, I take my helmet off. I just throw my hand through my sweaty hair, and somehow I get uh, <laughs> some of that right back into place. <laughs> Now I gotta ask this question. I, it, it's burning in my mind. One time we talked to you year before last, or last year, or whatever it was. You lost a bet. <laughs> you ain't lost. Oh, no, yeah. You haven't <laughs> lost any bets lately, have you? Yeah, the uh, the pink dress bet. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna call you out on it. Or, <laughs> well, you did. Yeah. <laughs> I well, wasn't gonna tell. I actually sitting here. I'm actually sitting here with my girlfriend. Over at my apartment, and uh, I'm sure she remembers that pink dress bet <laughs> very well. What, what, what was the bet? Uh, I had something to do about getting Twitter followers, and if I got <laughs> to a certain amount by the end of the week, then I had to put on that dress. And, hey, and uh, sure enough, I got to that amount. Hey, that's a good idea. Maybe yeah. if maybe if Jack can get some Twitter follower, a lot of t- Twitter followers, then we can get Jack in a pink dress. Ain't gonna happen. Gonna <laughs> ain't, gonna happen. ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. Go to tent yeah. Hey, hey, Kale, you talk about racing a dirt late model. Give us, tell us a little bit about that. I, I, I know last week you were testing that late model, but tell us a little bit about that. Do you enjoy racing on the dirt? Oh, I love it. It's, it's so fun. Uh, it's really relaxing to me because the NASCAR stuff gets so stressful and worrying about what next year is going to hold and, and trying to be the most impressive you can week in and week out. That when I go dirt racing, it's like it's like put the all that out the window, just go have fun, enjoy it, enjoy every lap. It, it, it's a it's a blast. I love doing it. The races are really short, and racing on dirt is just so different. You're really in control of the race car, and driving the, the, the equipment you're in definitely matters, but you could take a ill-handling car, switch up your line, and make it good. So uh, you've, you've got the options there, and... And it's cool because you don't get that much practice. I mean, you get about three laps of practice and you go straight into qualifying a heat race. So you don't have time to get your cars perfect. So in the NASCAR world, you got almost two hours of practice. But yeah. you, uh, you dial those things in really good. And, you know, dirt, the dirt racing is just so, so different than that that it's kind of fun to, to try something different every now and then. Where have you been racing the dirt uh, on dirt at? Oh, really all over the place. Whatever they're racing on off weekends, uh, whether it's Alabama or South Carolina, even North Carolina, we 
my first few races in the season was um, in Florida at Speed Week. So, wow. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, I've been very lucky to race uh, as many dirt races as I have. Now, is, that you, is that your team, or are you driving for somebody? I drive for uh, a guy named Jeremy Britton. He owns the, the car, uh, and we uh, it's a Pierce it's a Pierce car out of uh, Bob Pierce, you know Bobby Pierce. Mm-hmm. He uh, his dad is the one that builds the cars, and and uh, we got this deal pierced by BMC, and and uh, you know I'm just trying to get my feet wet, and lay my stuff, and, and learn it. I really enjoy it. Maybe we can uh, distribute some of those cars out in this North Carolina area someday. Um, I think we've ran impressive enough to, for people to take in, interest in it. We just got to keep doing our job. Yeah, it's got to be fun to be able to do that. That's because that's that's completely, like you say, it's completely different. And it's, little, it's back to kind of old school racing. It's a little more relaxing. Well, Cal, we yeah. appre- we Cal, we appreciate your time tonight. I know you're a busy person. I don't want you to be losing no bets, so if your girlfriend's there with you, we don't want you to have to wear another dress or nothing. But. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we appreciate the ride at uh, at Charlotte. We appreciate yeah. your time tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll get you back on here real soon. All right. Thank you for having me on, and uh, hope to uh, thank you guys for another ride here for too long, and uh, hope to have you back on. All right. And, uh, talk to you guys soon. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you a lot. Man. See you guys. Yeah, we definitely did have fun on that pace car ride. And definitely we'll get another one. The next time we go and we can get another, we'll definitely take another pace car ride. Yeah, that was, that was, I would like, like we ought to go to Daytona next to ride to see if we can get one at Daytona. <laughs> I did a ride along there, wasn't it? It was one of the petty ride alongs we were well, there you on did vacation. It. Um, and man, I'll tell you what, at Daytona, they, the, they run 165 miles an hour. And it's hard to believe how many G's you pull at 165. Right. I mean, you literally, when you go in the corner, and I would be all over the place at Daytona because I'd be bored. Because honestly, you, when coming off pit road, I'm thinking, oh my God, just like Kale did, he just took off wide open. And I'm thinking, and traditionally, when you're going into the corner, you let off. <laughs> you know, but. There and they run up close to the wall so that if you wreck, it just gets a hold of the wall and rides the wall. So instead of having a big impact and hitting, and and I was like, dude, I like you know, you let off maybe the first lap or something, but no, he didn't. <laughs> and and you go in there and you sink in the seat and you don't realize how much it pulls you down in the seat until you come off a of four and it's like you just feel your body go up and then you get onto the straightaway and it feels like you come up like you set up, and then it's just like. You know, the corner's a mile down that way, and and then it's like mm, it's like you you strain more preparing for the G's or, or yeah. not yeah, lifting going nice. in the corner. But man, at 165, I can't imagine what it was like, what it would be like in a cup yeah, car at 200 miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, because that's a huge that's a difference, huge yeah. speed, just like at Charlotte. That'd be huge. What the cup cars or whatever run around there. All right, our next guest is Danny Stockman. Crew chief of the 33 Xfinity car for Richard Childress Race. Hello. How you doing, Danny? This is Jack and Scott and Joe Staples <laughs> there tonight. How you doing? Good man, how y'all doing? We're doing wonderful. I'm glad we got we finally got you on here because you know you're one of our favorite people. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, we really what are y'all up to? yeah, we really enjoy being at Charlotte when you won the race down at Charlotte. That was a big deal for us too. Yeah, that was good, man. We uh, we had to work our butts off to get get the car where it needed to be. So uh, by the end of the night, it was pretty good. So that was fun. I, I tell you, it's Danny. It was fun watching you. Damn, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, uh, you and your driver pick on each other, Austin. Uh, it's, it, y'all seem like brothers from another mother. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, yep. He's uh, he's definitely like my little my little brother, and he's uh, he's growing up pretty quick here. <laughs> yeah. He uh, when I, when I first started working with him, he was like a I mean, acted about like a ten or twelve year old. <laughs> 
Now he's finally growing up. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a girlfriend and all that. And I bet it ain't too long. He's probably settling down. Just like his brother Ty has already. So, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's we're definitely real close and talk to him uh, a lot and hang out a lot. And uh, he just get, he's a good kid to be around. The switch that you that you and Nick and the teams the, the way you switched around was that because you had such a good rapport with with Austin and maybe not as good with Ty as, as you did with him? Well, you know, to be honest with you, it was just, uh, I think it was more of uh, an issue with with our performance on the street bar with, with, with myself and my team and Ty, and we just, we just weren't getting the job done. So um, they, they needed to make a switch, and, you know, it was, I was, I was up for it. I, I didn't. I wasn't happy with what I was doing either. So uh, we we made the switch, and I think it's been better for both of us. I mean, Nick's doing a great job with Ty, and, and we're uh, we're winning races with with uh, the boys on the thirty three car, and uh, it's just been going good. You know, we it, it's all about chemistry. We've talked about it so many times, and you hear a lot of people talk about how chemistry matters so much, and just being able to read. Read the, the facial expressions and the the, uh, the tone of the voice and all that stuff between your driver um, is it, big. And and when you when you get that when you when you know you can you can look at that and, and make decisions off of that, I think uh, that's when you know you got chemistry. So you know that was the decision they made, and uh, definitely definitely been good on our end, and I think it's been good on their end, and. Uh, just looking to go finish out the rest of the season. I think we got three more to go here and try to go get us three more wins. How hard is it, Danny, for you? You, you, you got Austin in the car most of the time, but then you, you, you every now and then you get a different driver. How hard is that? You know, you got the chemistry with Austin, but how hard is it to pick it up with like a Brandon Jones and a, uh, a Paul Menard or somebody like that? How hard is it to pick that, get that chemistry with them? Um, you know, we've actually, it's been pretty fun, you know, I've, I've worked with Austin for so long, and I worked with Ty for a year and a half, and I never really had the opportunity to work with anybody else, and I'll tell you, working with Paul, I, me, my team, everybody, we all really enjoy working with him, he's real laid back, and, uh, the guy, he, he's, he's a darn good race car driver, and he gives good feedback, and, you know, when he's in the car, he always got a, a shot to win. And then you got a guy with very little experience in Brandon Jones that is definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with soon. He is very, very talented. I feel like he will be uh, racing on Sunday at some point. I, I feel like he's got big time talent. Um, that kid, he's got really good feel too. He, he tells you what he needs in the car or what he's feeling and that if you fix the issue or, or or improve what he's wanting, that he's going to go faster. You know, we uh, we ran we ran really good every time we've had him in the car at Kentucky. We led a bunch of laps, and um, the pit strategy kind of messed us up. I felt like we had a shot to win there with him in the car and ended up fifth. But uh, that kid, he's he's really good, and we enjoy working with him also. I mean, he's run up front in the in the Arca, the trucks, and with you guys. So yeah. he he's definitely got a feel for it. I think. Yeah, he's definitely he's he's talented. He uh, he's some some of these younger guys these days that that they either got it or they don't, and there's no in between anymore. Um, you got to weed those ones out. And uh, Brandon Jones is one that's definitely got it. And that looking forward to see uh, seeing him progress next year, running with us at RCR and seeing what he can do uh, in one of our Xfinity cars. Now, Danny, how did you get started over there at RCR? Were you over there like very early in your career? Or? Yeah, I uh, I originally uh, started working in Vegas with um, Brendan Gone, and then uh, I worked there from when I was a teenager. I was about I don't know, 22, 23, and then I moved to uh, Cartersville and went to work for Kevin Harvick, and uh, we won a bunch of races with... Uh, Hornaday and, and Rick Green was our crew chief and I was the car chief over 
over there um, for uh, four or five years, won, won a ton of races and a couple championships. And when uh, Dylan uh, and Richard were wanting to start a truck team, they were looking for somebody to, you know, start, start it up, start the truck team up and build all the equipment and, and uh, be Austin's crew chief. And that's what I did. They hired me to, to head that deal up and start the truck team. And we built our own chassis and designed our bodies and, you know, just built a whole truck program. Um, and uh, that's where I started. And it was 2010, I believe, was our first first season. And uh, that was fun being able to do that. Um the truck days were definitely fun, but uh, just trying to move up in my career, you know, um, do the Xfinity thing and try to win some more races and win some more championships, and then hopefully down the line here we'll be, uh, be, be in Cup someday. That's my ultimate goal. Well, I think if you keep doing what you've been doing, I mean, you're obviously a name to be reckoned with, I mean, for sure. Damn. No, that's what we're trying to do. It's all about performance, and if you ain't performing, you ain't going nowhere, so we just got to keep performing and and uh, making that, making making the name for ourselves, and you know, try to try to do it. Now, what's it like to work with Richard Childress? I mean, obviously, he's been around for a long time. He's been very successful. I can imagine it could be in the beginning, maybe kind of intimidating to take on like that truck team for somebody like a Richard Childress. Yeah, definitely. Then I will say, uh, back then it was definitely. Um, it was a big step in my career. I was, I was pretty young, and and uh, yeah, I'd say. you know, and, and, and uh, Richard Childress wants to come head up their truck program. I mean, that's pretty cool, and mm-hmm. it definitely uh, was intimidating at times. But you get used to that, and and uh, you just got to you got to take charge and and do your job. And once they believe in you, it makes things a lot easier, and then they lay off your back, and and. Uh, job but uh, it was definitely cool to be able to get that opportunity um, still to this day I mean I have utmost respect for for Richard and Judy and, and Mike and Tina and everybody at RCR that give me a shot give me where I'm at today and uh, if it wasn't for them you know I wouldn't be here so uh, it's pretty awesome Danny at this day and time in racing you depend you know the the engineers play such a big part in, in, in racing and you got an engineer there that I'm pretty familiar with, and Andrew. How much do you rely on Andrew during a race weekend to help you out and get everything straight? Oh, definitely. It's, uh, I mean, me and him work side by side together all week long, every week. Um, uh, put putting a plan together to <clears throat> be able to, to have a successful weekend. I mean, it starts it starts the week before, two weeks before. Uh, you know, you might be at a race, a uh, different racetrack, but you're already thinking ahead, and you're already you're already doing your work to try to get ahead and be prepared. And I mean, Andrew is definitely a very, very, very big part of of our race team, and uh, I'm I rely on him a ton. And actually, right now he he went home to Australia last Sunday, uh, so he's been gone last week, and he's gone this week, and he comes back on Monday. And, to be quite honest with you, I miss Andrew right now. I, I really do. He's a, when, when, when they're gone and, and uh, they, your, your people, you, you don't realize how much people really actually do right. until they're not around anymore. And I'll tell you, Andrew, he's, a, he's definitely a big part of our race team. And uh, I miss Andrew right now. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's a, Andrew is a really a great guy. I mean, I've been around him a lot. And and a matter of fact, the other night when y'all won the race in Charlotte, he was one of the first people, first persons I got to when 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 y'all won because I'm mean, you know, I, it's good to see him have success. It's good to see all those guys from that '51 team that that work down there together go to other teams and have success. Yeah, definitely. And Andrew, he's the he's from Australia, like everybody everybody knows uh, in the business knows Andrew because he's the guy with the big long spiky hair and you know he kind of looks like a punk rocker type guy but uh the guy is dedicated as they get he's a hard worker and uh he's just a good guy to be around and very very sharp 
Well, we appreciate your time tonight. We didn't want to hold you too long. I know you got a lot going on. Um, so we, we, we appreciate you being with us. Hopefully we'll get you back on here again after you get a win down at Texas next week. Well, I'm 10-4, guys. Uh, anytime, like I said, uh, enjoy uh, being on your show, and I uh, hope you all have a good evening. And, Danny, we appreciate all, all, the, all the help you give us when we call you and give us an opportunity to bring you on the show. It's really great for us, too. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening. All right. Bye. You too, man. Thanks, Talk man. to you later. Let's say the, the him and Austin are, I mean, you've seen him in yeah. the media center, and I don't know if you you were listening to their channel uh, during yep. the race. And it was funny because there was something Austin said about somebody speaking funny because he calls him, uh, what's it called? he had another name I for know, him, I know. Andrew, or I don't know. He called Danny something else. And uh, so he, he had said something to him. So he says, I made something like he couldn't not quite understand him. And, and then the spotter come over and said, well, he said, he saw, I knew what he said. I was just trying to give, <laughs> you know, here they are, the monks trying to figure out what's wrong with the car. And, and Austin is joking him, right. you know, which is, that's, that's fun. That, that, yeah, right. if you're having fun, you do well, and you can see what they did at Charlotte. They yeah. won. You I just mean, have, con it just gives you confidence, you know. Uh, it, but it, it was fun. I, I was laughing at Austin because he was steadily, I mean, every caution, or even sometimes during a green flag run, he, 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 would, he would pick on somebody. And it, it was fun to see them in a media center. And, and Danny doesn't talk a whole lot. You know, he is a little bit reserved. Yep. And, and Austin's kind of just the opposite. And he had said that, you know, we're kind of like brothers. And he kept making, poking fun at him in the media center. And it, it was it was really fun to watch that that chemistry between those two. Yeah. Um, maybe he'd be on the pit box next year in, 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 in the Cup Series. I know it sounds like that's what he wants to do. Um, and they do have a great relationship. But that is a whole other level. Yeah, that's going a whole, from, di whole different thing. Yeah, from going from trucks. But, I mean, because he is still a very young crew chief. And even when he started a truck program, he was pretty young. Like I said, and then, I mean, he came from a team that had some success. Um, so that was very interesting and to build a team for a young guy. And him and Austin both were very young starting and going forward. But, you know, the, the thing that, that really gets to me is I was looking at you, – you saw Andrew after the race, and he came up to me, and, and I, I gave him a hug because, I mean, you know, it's really cool to watch those guys from that 51 team that my son started out on and the success they've had when they went to other teams. I mean, they had some success there, but now they've, they've gone to the next level, mm -hmm. and it's really great to see them. And, I mean, it's Andrew, it's Lee, it's um, Tristan, the guy that, that, that's the engineer on Chase Elliott's car. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys came from that yeah. 51. and Don't forget I, Nick. Nick's going to feel that. Well, up. Nick, too, you know. I, Nick's <coughs> not, yeah, Nick, Nick, too, really. <laughs> You got to be honest. Nick Nick's done real well since he's left there mm -hmm. too. So I mean, you know, but well, he, I would say that whole group did very well for what they had. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, it, you you win a race at Talladega, you won a race at Charlotte and uh, and Daytona, mm -hmm. out of that shop down there the last few years. I, mean, I know they had some uh, Hendrick Motorsports affiliation, mm -hmm. but still, the the budget that they had opposed to the Hendrick Motorsports <laughs> budget. <laughs> And, and and I don't know if we talked about it last week, but we were talking at Charlotte, some of the budgets of, of what teams, what sponsorship costs now. So a, a middle, to, I'd say a 20, top 20 team, their sponsorship uh, is roughly three to $400,000 per race. And, and a, a, a closer to the top of the tier, and I'm not gonna say top tier, but I'm gonna say pretty close, is a million dollars a race that is unbelievable it's crazy but i mean when you you know when we went over to hendrix i mean they got three four hundred employees maybe maybe more that might no, not that, be that maybe it might be upwards of 500 it takes a lot of dollars can you imagine what payroll cost you, you know you, it, it, you probably i don't know if you paid attention to it but i did we were walking through there with lee on that then that tour at hendrix and the equipment they've got, and how they—I mean—they got the 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 code readers to go around and read their equipment, and yes. the stuff they do, you know, is yeah. unbelievable. Everything has a barcode. Everything has a place. I mean, I, I totally—I could have spent all day going around and seeing and and being explained. I 
you know, this is our thing. This is the, the, the sport we love. So I totally loved going through there and seeing it. All. I would have loved to gone through the engine shop and the chassis shop and why they do it and how they do it. And, man, it's mind-blocking to see what they have there and not think that they ain't winning every race that they're in, you know? <laughs> I mean, it is. Oh, yeah. I mean, the amount of, of, of money that is spent in resources. But, but then you look at four teams come out of that one area. And you got one team here, well, two teams here and two teams here. And to think, you know, hey, they're all the same. No, they're not. And, it's no, completely they're definitely different. Definitely not. They're, they're completely definitely different. Not. I mean, everything is completely different from this shop to this shop. And Yeah, I mean, the resources are the same, but there's two completely no, different no, styles of, of, of running the 8848 shop and the 524 shop. And you could definitely, definitely feel that. I mean, yeah. there was no doubt. Um, where you were when you were yeah. in that place uh, the, the, i mean the, i could feel when 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 we were being shown some stuff on the 48 car or the 88 i think it was the 88 car sitting over there it was one of the ones that didn't have a cover on it and somebody come over and said something to us i mean you could just you yeah. could feel that the the, you, you the know, tension you, you know you're not supposed to uh let this out about this car or whatever you know yeah uh, i don't like know what, we would have even really known what we were looking at right. um but they didn't. It was leaning on the car, is what it was. Well, that's what, yeah. But no. you're not supposed. To, but he also told Lee something about you're not supposed to let something about mm. what was in the car or something. I, I didn't. Mm. I didn't hear the whole thing, but. Um, but that that was in the the other shop, and and it's, it's definitely it, it was it was neat to see. I mean, I, I totally totally enjoyed going through that, and I would love to go back any time and heck, probably every time and see what they're doing. It, it just. Well, I'll next, enjoy the that next part time of it. we'll have to go down to the to the R and D shop and mm -hmm. all that down on the other side. I mean the shop. The and I'd like to see the museum. Yeah, I would look. I, I, his I, car, the car where his cars I are. I think I think we could have gone there had you know had we yeah. had enough time. We just didn't have a lot of time. Yeah. But uh, it was really cool. But I'm gonna tell you, there's a lot of money floating through that place. Yeah. 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 I mean, unbelievable. It, unbelievable. Yeah. All right. Before we sign off this show, we have to do our picks for this week. And well, how how was the picks for last? Well, we ain't got to talk about that. Huh? Why not? <laughs> it's no big Why deal. Not? No, it's, it's no who, big deal. Who did you? <laughs> it's no big deal. Where did you finish? I finished third. I was I was I was second between us, <laughs> but third in the race. <laughs> who did you have? Gordon. Oh, that's okay. And you had Earnhardt Jr. and he had Kyle Busch. We all had decent finishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except, except Clayton. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't watch the show to, uh, to laugh. Except it, Clayton. Clayton, you fit, did not have a good – I'm sorry Denny Hamlin had the problems he had. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was totally self-inflicted. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah you, you won. That's your second win this year. <laughs> well, that hurt you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to I mean, tell I, the resistance. There. I yeah. just, I just went ahead and gave him the, the, the ovation he needed to have for two wins. I've gotten uh, five. You've gotten three. Five? I thought yeah. it was four. Maybe it was four. Uh, he just giving himself an extra one. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is five. Cheater, cheater, cheater. We're gonna have to get cheater. some auditors in I'm here a, for the yeah. end of the season. Eight. Yeah, yeah we'll have to do that because <laughs> <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but anyway, we're back to uh, picking again. I wish that light would stop peeking. <laughs> I ain't going to say that. <laughs> All right, Joe, you, you're first up there uh, oh, for this oh, week God. at Martinsville. You know what? I'm going to take – I'm going to take Joey Locano. Ain't nothing like jumping on a bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> I need a win. <laughs> Logano's decent at, at, at Martinsville. Yeah. Man, he is on a roll, though. He's on a roll. Well, you, you took Logano, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride a horse for the second week in a row. I think, from what I'm hearing, Jeff Gordon is going is to have a I think he's going to have a good – You guys were there for that, for that win, and it would be awesome to yeah. – you know, I, I, and, and but we won't make it this week. Oh, you guys not gonna make it? No. Oh, no. The thing about it is, you know, the uh, if he doesn't win before the end of this season, 
Like Scott said, we can honestly say we were there for the last one. Right. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And I was. It's, it's terrible to think <laughs> that you kind of want him to win, but you don't want him to win. <laughs> for your, for your so, own so you sake. Have, yeah. Yeah, so I can toot my own after. horn. But, you know, and, and, and then I was there uh, when my son got his first win with Gordon. At, at Martinsville, and so yeah, it's a really big deal. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like you. <laughs> I, I want to see my son win races, <laughs> but you know, it would be kind of cool to be able to say yeah. that. I was well, there. I was hoping that we would be at Martinsville, and that if he did win, we could still say we'd be at his yeah. possibly his last, last win. win. But you know what? I mean, I really think after this run, I think he has a legitimate shot to go. I mean, we got some really good tracks for him coming up. Yeah. And you don't, and, and and it's like they said, you don't have to win to get there. No, right. but you're going to have to outpoint some folks, and then oh, yeah. if well, it's going to be tough. I mean, ain't no now doubt if you get about three that. different winners, if you get three different winners, you're in the screwed next, in the next three weeks. You're done. The only the fourth guy in the points is going. I mean, you know, the guy that's highest in points after that is going to get in. So it's going to be really tough. So <coughs> kind of like Logano made sure did nobody else get no wins in the last one. Yeah, he, he he definitely did that. What, what tracks do we have coming up? I know we got Martinsville, Texas, Texas, and, and then Phoenix. So I mean, we have some good tracks for uh, for a lot of those guys. That are also, there. Harvick Harvick is good at uh, Phoenix. Harvick is beyond good at Phoenix. Yeah, you, you can almost about half put the win column in, in, in for him at at, at Phoenix, um, and then. Texas is a decent place for for all those guys. I don't think that's really special for any. Probably that's probably a good track for Joey compared to everybody else. So who's your pick? Man, I'm kind of on the fence about the four or the 88 because they're they're both going to run well at Martinsville. I believe, you know, the 88's got a legitimate shot at it at Martinsville. So does the 48. Yeah. Clayton called the 48. He he already he said he was going for the 48. But you know, with the bad blood, I'm 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 gonna go with Harvick. I think with all the, those guys seem to relish in pressure. For whatever they really reason, do. They really yeah. do. I mean, they just guys. I don't know how. Uh, and I still always remember him saying a few weeks ago when he had to win at, at Dover that, you know, they were, you know, does this pressure? He was like, you know, this is not pressure. When you have to take over for Dale Sr. in the second race to sure. take his car over, that's pressure. I can't imagine what that was like. That had to be very, very hard. Oh, yeah. Because you know that the, the pit crew there was a Dale Earnhardt. They were diehard Dale Earnhardt people. And then he has to step in there. And I gotta say, the kid, the, he's not a kid anymore, but he he did a very good job at what was presented to him for what he had to do. And I and, think that kind of bothered him some because he always felt like he's driving Dale's car instead of being his own right. team. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to have seen how he would have fit in if nothing would have happened to Dale, because I, you know he would have been teammates with him. Um, but yeah, it, it is what it is at this point. So anyway, that's the uh, and Clayton, we got your Jimmy Johnson pick, but you know, hey, whatever. Uh, <laughs> we, hey, what did he post? The, <laughs> the, did, the loyal he, fan watcher. The loyal yeah, fan watcher. Yeah, that was hilarious. Uh, that was good, Clayton. Uh, oh, yeah, say that. Do, we, do we have anything for next week? Do we know of yet? Uh, not at this point in time. I'm looking at hopefully. I don't know whether I should say it or not, but hopefully we're looking at Max Siegel. Mm. Uh, I'm hoping it'll be within the next two weeks anyway uh, uh, that we have that set up. Uh, I talked with them today, and uh, they said they would get back with me. So it's going to be either this Tuesday or the next Tuesday, I'm hoping. Yeah. Well, but, that, that would be a very neat show because he has a very different aspect of, of NASCAR, and he's been in the sport for a long time. He's been a very successful in music producing. Uh, we were looking him up earlier. Um, he's he's worked with Britney Spears and Usher. Uh, I forget who the other one was in, in, in the gospel side of it also. So it's pretty neat that, that his – and then owning uh, Rev Racing. And I'm, I'm kind of hoping that maybe they can put it all together where I get Jefferson Hodges back on here to tell us about the, the – the, How the, the combine. How the combine did. Combine. What, you know, what his highlights of the combine. I know he's not going to tell us a whole lot about who's doing what, but, I mean, 
give us that, get Max on here at the same time, and maybe get a one of the drivers that was there, get them on the show, and and, and then you just put the whole week as a diversity. Mm-hmm. Uh, still working on a couple after the season's over with. Uh, I'm going to have a Southampton Speedway show. Bring some folks on. I don't want to hear it because I know what you're thinking. No, <laughs> you know, we were actually talking about the track, you know, because uh, some future down the road might not, you know, we're still iffy about that. But I thought, you know, that might be a that might be a good idea to see that track pop back up again. I would lo- I would love to see it come up again. Yeah. I mean, it and a little bit of work. It's going to take a little work to get it back, but. It would be worth the, the effort to get it back, but that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. All right. All right, well, we'll see you next week. Hopefully we'll have a Max Siegel with us, or we'll have a good show next week no matter what. Um, you going to be with us next week? Yes. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I might even have some exciting news next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> A new well, whatever that news is, <laughs> a new nickname is coming. A new nickname is coming. <laughs> whatever, whatever that news is, and the person that, and I know there's somebody out there watching it. Whatever that news is, let's keep that down there. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>